Hey everybody, it's Devin Francis, also known as Leonard Meltzner. And I'm wearing a cloak. Birthday cloak, birthday cloak. Birthday cloak. And you're watching episode 152 of the Adventures in Odyssey podcast. What are we talking about today, Victoria? Um, the shame about fame. And? The sandwich initiative. Yes. You can't talk at normal volume, Victoria. I'm losing my voice. Oh, okay. Um, yes, we are beginning album 65. Expect the Unexpected is the title. What is, is that a specific reference to something that happens in this album? We don't know yet, but we still got all the Buck Eugene drama and Katrina coming up still. Wait, wait, no, wouldn't that be the Sandwich Initiative? What? Would it be connected to that one? What? I don't know. Okay, never mind. Why? I meant like the title. Why? Of the album. Yeah, but why? How is that connected know. to the Sandwich Initiative? I don't know. They're like, do things people don't expect and stuff. It's it's expect the unexpected. Oh. I don't, I don't think that's usually an admonition to go out and do things for people. That usually means things are like, Maybe like, it's crazy, whenever. It, maybe it's things. just supposed to like convey my feelings towards Mori episodes. Next, that's next episode. Next time. Okay. Shame About Fame, episode 850, written by Kathy. What happens, Victoria? Uh, Jules and Connie are looking for a new roommate. And then there's this girl who Connie's like, not sure if she wants to live with them. Connie's back on that judgment juice again. Yeah, she's drinking it up. Yum, yum, yum. Um, and she, this girl wants to like go into advertising, so she gets Connie's help with that. And in return, Connie gets the girl to help Olivia and Zoe with this like new talk show they want to start. And they get Jay to go on it, and Jay bolsters himself up saying he can do things he can't. And then he ends up like trying to eat a bunch of jelly beans or like have them all in his mouth kind of Yes, eating would have gone much marshmallow better. style, like chubby bunny style. Mm-hmm. And um then he Or like that chokes. one vine with Gavin. He chokes and Zoe saves him and then it goes viral. Yeah. Maybe not viral, but um and then like Olivia gets all hot and bothered by the fact that she looks bad in the video, and uh, and then like they all make up in the end. <laughs> the The girl who's not gonna move in, or who does end up moving in with Jules and Connie, because she gives Olivia and Zoe good advice. Not right, just Zoe, good advice. Zoe passes on that advice. And then uh, Jay ends up saving both of them, and he is really stalkery and predatory. Mm-hmm. And this episode made me really think hard about if I like Jay anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the episode. Although the line, like, my future wife, and I was just like, oh, I was cringing so bad. And they said, my future wife's maid of honor. That that line did make me laugh. So, um, And then I was back to cringing again, like, one second later, though. So, yeah, we have this potential roommate for Connie and Jules to replace Penny. Um, now that she's gone, she reminded me very much of Lindsay from Best of Enemies. Except for Connie actually liked her in the end. Yeah. So, yeah. She was super judgy at first, and I was like, man, this is really becoming a thing with Connie lately. Um, I was super surprised, actually, to hear that Connie is still, like, eating cookie dough for breakfast when she's always so stringent about keeping jewels in line. And I was like... Yeah, that doesn't apply to her. Yeah, apparently not. Um, they mentioned BTV which feels weird at this point, even though I know they're making BTV episodes again, but it's still like... B for Bernard, Victoria. 
B for Bruce, what? B for Brave, thought... B for Bernard. I thought it stood for Bible. Um, so Zoe and Olivia are going to make... I thought it stood for Bad Adaptation of the Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gonna... thought it stood for Breaking Victoria's Heart. I th thought it stood for Butter of Peanuts and Jelly. PJ. Um, I know. It just wasn't funny. I know. Olivia and Zoe are like, hey, uh, we're going to make a show, talk show, on Club Kid Chat Live. And I was like, okay, so Club Kid Chat is still up and around. It has Club Kid Chat is um, it is outlived. longer than yeah. Club Penguin. <laughs> yes. It has a live streaming platform now, so it's, it is l updating into the modern age. It's an interesting idea, but I guess the reason they're doing it is because parodies of YouTube or even Twitch would have age restrictions that might not meet with the characters that they want to deal with the plots with. Also, before I forget, um, one episode, it might be the next one, I just want to say before I forget, mentioned a Swiffer, and I was like, huh, Swiffers are now canon in Odyssey. <laughs> That's interesting. We the most interesting brands. Well, now we have fidget spinners and we have Swiffers. But no Facebook. No Facebook, though. <laughs> no Google. We're only taking the important things. Screw you, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. It's still funny to me to think about, like, how we landed on Appleberry. Because when that first came out as a brand in Odyssey back in 53, that, like, Apple and BlackBerry were the main two competing, like, phone brands. <laughs> it's like, when when was the last time you heard about someone having a BlackBerry phone? Like, I wonder how they would have incorporated... I don't even know what BlackBerry phones look like. For all I know well, they they're not like smartphones, is the thing. That's how oh. old it is. BlackBerry, I don't think, has ever released a smartphone. They still have, like, the keyboard with all of the buttons on it, like, the whole alphabet keyboard on it. Oh, Nowadays, it would presumably be Apple and Android. Yeah. But I don't know, like, what name they would have combined instead for that. Um, Android. App Android. So, yeah, they're like, okay, we're going to make this show. We're going to be famous by making our, our talk show that we stream on Club Kid Chat Live. And I was like, yeah, guys, you go be the next Logan Paul or whatever, which... Team 10. Honestly. I hate that I know what they're called. I made that joke right now without thinking about the fact that that nearly came true because Zoe and Olivia came this close to live streaming a snuff film. They really were nearly Logan Paul because Jay came this close to dying on their show. There's and so many times at camp this summer where all the kids mention Logan Paul or Jake Paul. And they're like, yeah, oh, just like not, Logan oh. Paul. And I'm like dying. And I just want to like shake them. Be like, no. Bad. I don't want to like be one of those people who disparages on the youth of today, but I that know, is concerning. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, don't don't look up to these people who make jokes out of dead bodies. Don't do it. Also, who scam people out of tons and tons of money on a regular basis? I still can't believe he's dating Chloe Bennett. Anyway, let's talk about something else. Yeah. So, um, Jay comes with an inch of choking to death on the air, which is wild. And then Zoe, I was like, wow. I probably wasn't concerned as much as I needed to be about Jay. I was like, holy crap, Zoe, fine. like, I thought she was just gonna, because she's like, how am I gonna make up to ever, skipping way ahead, she's like, how am I gonna make up to Olivia? I need Olivia to look good now because I've ruined her life because she was all panicky and freaking out on this video that went viral. Um, and now they're like, make, we're making fun of her on the news while she's there in person. Yeah, which was that pretty, was crappy of them. It was pretty low, yeah. That was mean. Um, I thought, I was so worried during like the Heimlich scene that Zoe was gonna somehow, I didn't even know how it was gonna happen. But I was worried they were somehow going to end up doing mouth to mouth between Zoe and Jay, and I was like, I don't want that to happen. That would be at all. inadvisable, 
when yeah, you are... It, it didn't make any sense to me, but it just kind of felt like one of those scenarios where would be like, oh no, he has to kiss him now to make him better. And yeah, like, that is a big no. thing in, um, in first aid training. Like, if you find someone that was already unconscious, making sure that it's not because they were choking before you do mouth to mouth because if they were choking with something in their throat then you'll start choking too it will spread like a plague yeah. no because <laughs> everyone if, will be choking if they have something eventually. in their throat and you blow into it you could shoot it down even farther into their windpipe if you blow yeah but it. then no i'll go down their stomach mm -hmm. and they'll be all good yeah and then you just ate a bunch of jelly beans um so so it's like i can make it up to you and i was like oh no she's gonna like pretend to choke and have Olivia do the Heimlich on her so it's reversed and I was like Zoe that's a terrible idea because that's very she's like no I'll just get hit by a car yeah I was like no Zoe that's very dangerous because it was already very statistically unlikely that Jay didn't break any ribs in the process you could really hurt Olivia but no she's like no Olivia that would be dumb I'm just gonna jump into actual oncoming traffic <laughs> I was sitting there I was like, and I was just like hmm <laughs> Maybe if she was fast enough, she would be able to get out of it. I'm not sure, because I'm an idiot. And then um, I was thinking, but like, if they actually do end up doing this, Chris is probably going to have to make a disclaimer. It's like two sides to every story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, now remember, kids, don't run into off oncoming traffic. Because some policemen called, and they gave us angry phone calls, so we had to re-record the end of this episode. Yeah, very quickly, because this is the OAC, and we already did it. Yeah, um, this, this is actually live, live recording. This is the best live show we've ever done. <laughs> yeah, no, um, my favorite moment in this whole episode, it was so, so, so funny, is the fact that Jay's heroic, life-saving moment that was fully caught on camera... Uh, he the was end. in a bush. Yeah, involves yeah. him on camera. He just leaps out of nearby bushes with no like. This is the news commenting on it. No one questions that. No one comments on the fact that he just bursts. He just spawns out of bushes and dive <laughs> tackles them out of the road. Jay's like a video game enemy. We were like that shouldn't have spawned there, and it does anyway. Honestly, I don't know why anyone's surprised at this point. I like to think it they've all just gotten used to the fact that Jay just spawns out just, of bushes. It's so, so no funny. Like it, it was anymore. such a But it, no, I thought that was hilarious and then I didn't as soon as I realized he was probably there because he was stalking Zoe. Yeah. And I was like, Okay, yeah, that's not funny anymore. That's now very uncomfortable. And then I had the third thought, what if he's the one who pushed or cut whatever thing was holding the trailer in place so it would go towards them so he could push them out of the way okay but victoria i feel they, like they never commented on whether that was actually a thing or not so i'm assuming it's not yeah i feel like your your suspicions may get be getting a little bit out of hand Me I, I wouldn't want to thoughts go out of hand accuse jay yet at this point what? of attempted double murder no, he was going to save them. Yeah, but if he didn't... He would have. Are you crinkling tissue paper? No. Okay. Maybe it's just the connection. Um, yeah, the I laughed so hard at the Jay jumping out of the bushes and the fact that this was like on camera and on the news and stuff because I was like, it was such a little gag in album 51 and the fact that they've carried it on for this long is as such a thing. It's... It's the best running joke in the series. Um, the other part that really made me laugh, okay? even though it turned out this wasn't what was actually happening, was when Jillian comes up to Connie at the end. That's what her name is. Yeah. And they said to, that they could see two Jillians coming up the sidewalk. And then she yelled, single L Jillian, single L Marshall. And because she was double L Jillian, double L Marshall. And so... Because they said two Jillians were coming up the sidewalk, I was really, really hoping this is going to turn out she was with her identical twin, who has the same name, but it's spelled differently, like a Stanford and Stanley Pine sort of thing. It's like, oh, Connie, I didn't introduce you to my twin sister. This is Jillian with one L. <laughs> and Marshall, she has a different last name, too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But I was like, oh, please, that would be 
so funny. That would be even better than Gravity Falls. And then she was like, I'm literally beside myself with excitement. And Connie's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, Connie, you fool. I know. I was like, Connie, you walked right into that one. That's even what it means. The expression, I think the origin of the concept of that expression came from ancient Egypt, I want to say. Or is we it were standing Rome? beside mirrors or ponds. Or it was one of those three. Surfaces. And it, I believe, began with the idea that when you get really excited your soul literally like leaves your body and is like beside you like your soul is so big with emotion that it can't be contained by your body and so it's like beside you and it comes back into you well that doesn't sound healthy i mean you kind of see it in anime right when like people get like a little ghost spirit above their head and stuff yeah but that's usually not when they're excited so. no but it, it you know they could be beside themselves with exasperation or yeah, I guess that makes sense. I was thinking, I've never seen that in anything. That's dumb. And then you said anime, and I was like, oh, right. yeah, that happens, like, literally 24 seconds. Well, if it's an anime, then it can't be dumb. <laughs> well, if it's an anime, it must be true. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that, theoretically, Jillian is still staying around. I don't know if she's actually going to stay around or not. Um, Probably if she's supposed to be actually living with them. I was going to say she's going to be like Renee, but then I realized this isn't the club. Yeah. Is your so. headphones plugged in all the way or something? Is your mic hitting your hair? No. Okay. My headphones are plugged in all the way. They're just, um, I might need new ones. Ah. Um, so, yeah, I was also. I keep on getting them wet by accident. Ah, you should constantly. stop doing that. I'm trying. I was really glad that, like, Connie actually admitted that she'd been really judgy about Jillian. Because, like I said earlier, like, I've commented several times now about how she's been doing that a fair amount since Jules came to stay. And I figured that she was being too harshly unfair and quick to judge and, like, try and keep Jules on track. But she wasn't called out for it before. And then finally she's like, yeah, you know what? That was on me. And I was like, it's good. Um, I don't really have much to say about this episode. Yeah, neither do I. I, I like mean, I skipped Zoe over most of it. more in this episode. I think Zoe's growing on me. I think I like her. It took a while, though. Yeah. She's been in a number of episodes now. We can't keep making the same jokes about her. All I the know. Time. I, yeah, if she wasn't in... I feel like I would have liked her more if she hadn't come out of literally nowhere. Well, if... But I guess all of these characters since the hiatus came out of nowhere. Yeah. So... I was going to say if it wasn't, yeah. like, introduced the first time, it was like, oh, yeah, she's your best friend that we never met before. But, yeah, that's how a lot of characters get introduced out of nowhere, already having these, like, supposedly long-established previous relationships with everyone. Yeah, I guess the first time Trent shows up, it's like, by the way, Jared has a brother, and we're like, what? Which he did technically mention in his first episode. Did he? In the pushover with Cody. And he's like, why are you so harsh on Cody, Wit says to Jared. And he's like, I'm not. It's like, like I got mad at my little brother for his coloring outside the lines. And it's like, how old oh. is your brother? And he's okay, like, yeah. he's two. Never mind. But that was the only time that he was ever mentioned, which includes, I believe, all of the Novacom stuff, talking about running away and hiding with his family. I don't think he ever mentioned his having a sibling through all of that again. Ah, oh, I never thought about this, but Trent had to go into the witness protection program. Mm -hmm. I've never thought about that before. Yeah, I well, mean, if I never when, thought about in Trent's that. first episode, he's like, I didn't want to set a weird reputation now that we're finally back in Odyssey. Oh, I never thought about that. Seven. Yeah, I guess Trent I've never really thought about it much in terms of, like, him. his personal experience with it, just the fact that it was the thing that happened. But I'm surprised they never really explored that more, given that he was such a main character after your return. I can't believe Trent. Do you think he ever makes jokes about that? Oh, all, like all I the would. time. Yeah, I'm sure the like, gallows Like Mandy is. and Marvin say something. It's just like, oh man, this sucks. And Trent's like, oh, I'm going to have to go back into the witness protection program. Shoving, and it'd be like, so good. Shoving breadsticks into his purse, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> his version. so funny. Oh, it'd be so funny. Or like the, 
sorry guys, my mom called, she says no, I have to go home now, kind of thing. Sorry guys, mom called, I have to go into the witness protection program again. <laughs> Like get out. he he accidentally like trips yeah like just a little bit doesn't even fall but like trips over a carpet and he's like oh i'm a failure mandy just saw me trip i need to go into the witness protection program <laughs> she'll never love me oh let's just blast my cash guys yeah no i like this it makes a lot of sense He, that could have been such a good running joke. It's like it. It would have been. It, it would have been so funny. It's like like all, every single time. It's like all the jokes they made about Errol ringing the bell in dust. It's like, yeah. why'd you go into the witness protection program, Trent? Did you, were you just trying to get out of an awkward conversation? Was he <laughs> asking you to do some house sitting for him? Boy, I wish I could go into the witness protection program every time I didn't want to talk to my mother in law. <laughs> <laughs> but but um hey oh, if, man, do you if, think, so, like, if someone Mandy... does forget the gluten-free options is that like a witness protection program kind of situation <laughs> um so you mean like he actually goes back into the witness protection program yes every time okay <laughs> that makes no it that even wasn't better. what i meant but people joke about it uh I should, um, i'm gonna link that in the anima that animatic in the description but 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 what what if Trent and Maddie, once they have kids and grandkids, like they always make jokes about it? Oh yeah, but they don't the believe kids. it actually happened. Yeah, yeah. They're like there yeah, goes like, Grandpa um... back on his nonsense again. <laughs> oh, Grandpa, Crazy you're so senile. They tried to murder us, and they used microwaves and toasters. Oh, I'm sure brain, they did, Grandpa. Brain, bird, bird houses and cola. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm everyone, sure they did. Everyone bought birdhouses. <laughs> we're living Your in, grandma we're living in the woods. Your grandma used to be so smart. I'm sure she did, Grandpa. <laughs> that was the sad one. But then she was she played the video games and they made her <laughs> they made her buy grizzly chips. Subliminal messaging, it'll get you sit farther back from the TV. In fact, let's just get rid of the TV. <laughs> so he's gone full black veil. He's like throwing <laughs> throwing the cable box out in the yard. Except for like it's all legit. And oh my gosh. This Oh my god. Why couldn't have Trent been in more episodes, Devin? I'm Why sad that not? they never did a thing with this, and I like how this has been half of our review now for The Shame About Fame. This entire conversation about Trent is better than this entire episode. That's, that's <laughs> Nothing true. against this episode. <sighs> Was there anything else to talk about for this episode? If Trent didn't make, like, jokes about the Witness Protection Program, Jared must like i am i'm upset jared didn't do it in the show i mean he like he talked about it in the case of the disappearing hortons but no i'm upset he didn't like make jokes about it yeah i know yeah that would have been like such a great so good it would have been very such realistic a good that's the only, what? that's all I would talk about if that was me. Yeah, I know, right? I'd be milking that for the rest of my natural life. I know. One of my friends, like, um, when he was in grade 10, And then Andromeda Hit Squads came after him? No, he was, like, on a field trip, and then he he was very, very flexible and did, like, Okay, this, I knew exactly, that's what you were talking about, getting yeah. asked to join the circus. Yeah, and he was, he was seen by, I guess, some people in a circus, and he was asked if he would join their circus when he, when we were all in grade 10, and, like, I brought it up a lot, because that is the coolest thing to me, and, like, how could you not mention that yeah. everywhere you go? Like, hi, my name is so-and-so. I was asked Changing to join names a circus because I'm now. really cool. I, I'm not yeah. gonna no. say what his yeah, name is. Yeah, I know is. that is fine. I haven't I, even talked to him in like a really long time. I actually thought I about him okay. last week because I was watching a dancing video, 
that made me think of her. Every single time I see someone dance, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, so, final thoughts on this episode. Um, <clears throat> it's been like two weeks since I listened to it. Two and a half weeks or so. It's been like two hours and since I, I listened to it. I clearly don't remember most of it super duper well. Um, I did enjoy... I'm interested in Julian. Yeah, I, I hope that Jillian actually does stick around. I Jillian, feel like there's not a, Julian. a decent chance that she will, given that this isn't an album and she's supposed to be living in the same house as Connie and Jules. I but, wonder if she's going to appear in any club episodes. I like that Jules has a friend now who... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, when you said this was a Kathy episode, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense, because... Kathy wants them to have friends. Yeah. Which is a good thing, and I want them to have friends too. At first, I was like, so. oh, this Jillian character is so doomed from being on the show because Connie judges her right off the bat. And then she's like, oh, I like fashion, and I'm stereotypically flighty, and I like to talk to Jules about jewelry and clothes. And I was like, yeah, they're going to be like, oh, she's a bad influence, and she's shallow. She has to go. But then she turned out to be not shallow, and she gets to stay. And I was like, cool. Don't, let, like her be a, don't let her be her a hair color stereotype. All the time. Yeah. Like if Agnes was still alive, maybe she is for all we know. Her and, and like Jillian could bond over that. They could do each other's hair. Yeah, there was definitely the same thing you said with uh, with Jay at the end. I was like. Okay, Jay, Jay made me uncomfortable on this like, episode. I was like, now you're getting creepy about it. Which he isn't was to say... creepy in the entire episode. I don't like when he interacts with Zoe. Not to say, yeah, that it hasn't been that way most of the time that he's talked about Zoe in the past. And I don't like it because of the fact that when you constantly present that kind of thing in media without criticizing it, then you set up expectations that this is how guys are supposed to react towards the people that they like, which is like an unhealthy precedent to set the first couple times sort of he was like talking about zoe in her first i think it was her first episode or first couple episodes um it was like all fine stuff and then as it went on it became like i think with like the buddy one the snow mm-hmm. day episode buddy's snowy adventure whatever the heck it's called yeah sounds like an air bud episode yeah. or movie snow buddies it's, yeah, Snow Buddies, uh, Air Buddies, but yeah, in that one, he just like flat out wanted to manipulate Zoe, and I was like, no, thank you, no, thank you, Jay. Yes. No. I'm concerned about that boy. I'm always concerned about that boy. This changes nothing. Yeah, but different. This just changes my level of concern. Yeah. I did find it funny, like Olivia and Zoe's ideas of like, we're gonna get famous because we're we, we're creating a show on Club Kid Chat Live, and that's how you get internet famous. We're, we're gonna, you know, yeah. all you need to do is start a, a Twitch channel, and the next thing you know, you're PewDiePie, maybe less the racial slurs. Yeah. Or Logan Paul. <laughs> either one, either or. Um, yeah, it was it was all right as far as like the season premiere goes. It wasn't. It it wasn't that bad. It kind of no, reminded it... me of the one with Jeff and Connie's high school friend. A little bit. Sorry? Oh, Mean Streaks. Yeah. The one from like two months ago. Yeah, it kind of gave me like the same feel. No, I get that. I get that. Except for Connie was more like in this one what Jules was like in Mean Streaks and stuff. And... Yeah. Anyway, I feel let's I feel talk. bad when I don't have enough to say about something, but not I don't. <laughs> not every episode can not have least. everything to say about it. Yeah. 
I oh the next episode. I don't know what to give this episode. I think I'll just give it like a three point five. Um. Yeah, that that sounds fair. Three point five out of five. Next episode. I don't want to talk about this one. I don't like this one at all. All right. I uh, will switch recordings here and talk about Sandwich Initiative. <laughs> we uh, should do. We should do the counting, but we just raise our eyebrows at each other. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm the one who has to suffer through all the nonsense that you put me through. I know it's great. She says as she drinks water with a mic against her throat. Uh, can you hear me swallow? <sighs> Not this time, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> episode 851, The Sandwich Initiative, written by Marshall Younger. Uh, Marshall Younger sounds like young wit. Okay. What do you think? Oh, his voice, you mean. I thought you meant his name. No. What? No! Well, that's what's confused. I was like, what? Because he has younger in his name? No. Yes. No, yes, you're that correct. Is... Yes, he does sound uh, relatively similar to younger wit. Yeah. Actually, for a moment... Uh, no, let's start. Let's start talking. What happens? Oh, we already were. Oh, I didn't realize we were. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then I'll just keep on talking about this. Um, no, when I thought for a second it was young wit, I was like, I thought it the name of the actor was different, but I also missed who wrote it. Mm -hmm. But I was like, for all I know, Young Wit could be a writer. And I was like, you know what? It makes me not hate the episode as much if it turns out it's Young Wit. <laughs> but now there's no excuse. So in this episode, it's the Parkers and they have a non-picnic and they eat sandwiches. But the kids don't clean up the food. So then David kills them all. No, sorry, the shapeshifter that has inhabited David's <laughs> body, because that is not David. There's Ava is the only original Parker voice left now I out of know. the five of them. There and is... everyone else has changed voices like at, um I don't know, about four times at this point. Like it hurt. There is a fairly decent live show joke being set up here eventually. <laughs> Just like they did with Wit and Jason. I mean, is it really going to be fairly decent, though? I think so. I like the meta or jokes like that that actually like draws us okay, yeah, better I, than I like, will admit the haha, Jason we're on a boat. And Oh, the yeah, thank you. I got you. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. What else happens in the episode? Oh, wait. That's it. <laughs> there's there's this boy um, whose name is... Oh, Something. M? He what has a it? name. What is it, though? Well, it's not my He was, notes. like, really annoying me, but then I kind of sort of liked him by the end of it. And it was like... You didn't try I was to like, that he's bad. annoying, but I can't be annoyed by him because that's the point. And then I'm just falling into their object lesson. No, like once I found out the... No, I think the point was because Olivia and uh, Matthew and Camilla try to do all these different things in it. And um, one of the things they do is they start cleaning up all this garbage from the park because they're worried the park's going to get shut down if they don't. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out like, they didn't need to clean the garbage because the city was going to do it and they were going to tear down the park because they were going to build a new park there. Yes. And um, when I found that out, honestly, I was kind of like, oh, man. Was, they put, like, their entire day's work into cleaning it up, which was really cool of them. And I was kind of upset, but not because of that kid because he honestly, like, did not know. And he was trying to, like help them out and stuff and I was like you know what that was cool of you to also like pitch in on something that you had like no stake in whatsoever so I like you and also with like the whole 
cheese plate thing before that he that was also him like honestly trying to help them so like from that point on I was just like you know what you're not that bad I kind of say he has no stake in it like the Parkers have this this high stake riding on this. And well, you know stake, what I mean. No, you I, it's I funny because I think about that and I'm like, the stake is we finally get to hear another lesson in devotion. <laughs> I, I I did enjoy that. It's constantly like, I, we're talking liked, about this again tonight. Again, it's an eight-part series. <laughs> like, <laughs> I liked the first conversation. The eight-part series thing did make me laugh, but so did the first part where it was like, oh, it's a two-part series. And then at the end of the conversation, he was like, Oh, and tomorrow night, it's a three-part series, and they're like, ah. Yeah, I like how it's like... I like Ava constantly being like, please, please, stop. And he was like, no. Tears in her eyes. Yeah. No. Please, David, please stop. No, I really thought... I. The only thing about this episode that I really enjoyed was David getting increasingly and increasingly more, like, manic and paranoid about this sandwich. I did actually like Beyond the, the point ending of all because um, no one's touched the sandwich but David has been filming himself with the sandwich like a little documentary about how no one will do chores or anything. Yeah. And then he finds out at the end like literally everyone knew and they didn't and touch it because they thought it was like his new best friend had gone insane or something like that, and they yeah. didn't want to make him cry or whatever. He pressed and a I was hand. like, okay, that's that's actually pretty funny. <laughs> he pressed a handprint into the bread and started calling it Wilson. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I really I like this, like good. this slow descent into Lord of the Flies madness that he had going on through the episode. Until Ava is um, like, "Please, David, can like can some sanity return to our household? Like the children are starving." People are dying. The children are, are starving. Our crops aren't watered. Yeah. Our bays aren't. Our and bills like, aren't. No, pulled. we will not eat. We will not sleep until someone cleans the sandwich. And she's like, um, uh, so they, they if did. You, I need them to do another like present long ago episode, so we can see the future. See that David actually got buried. Next to the place where the garbage was thrown out in the dumpster. <laughs> oh, that's romantic. It is. Um, it's beautiful. I think they brought it up later in the episode, but yeah, I immediately checked. That is not the origin of picnic, the word. It is mid 18th siècle from the French picnic, origin unknown. So who knows what it really means? That could have meant that. Then why do people make picnic picnic if no one knows? You know who made it up, probably? Robespierre. Shakespeare. Well, it's French, so... You don't know that. I don't know. Um, Even though you just looked it up, you clearly I really, saw I really French. sympathized with Ava when she was like... She's like, it's, it's not going to happen. The kids aren't going to do it. And we are going to be the ones to suffer if they just leave the sandwich out forever. So why don't we clean it up? Because they're not going to do it. And like it's, it'll blow back on us, not on them. Literally blow back the awful stench of the rotting food. And I was like, man, I simply... I was like making lunch when <laughs> I was listening to this episode. And I looked up and I was like, mom, can I help clean up with anything? And she was like... Uh, I don't know. I'm working. I was like, okay, I'm just going to clean all of this up. Okay, good. I thought you were just going to say you were making a sandwich for lunch, and you looked down on it, and you were like, maybe I'll make something else. That's good. No, Look, I didn't actually... even No, Mom and Dad got French bread and chicken, and I just did that thing I do. Well, it is Sunday I afternoon. I compartmentalize all my food so they don't touch. Yes. Yes. I know. Where you like, I'll eat the bread, I'll eat the chicken. And I'll pick up this little pile of salt and pepper that I've sprinkled separately onto the table. Just pinch them and, <laughs> and just lick the plate. Now for a cup, a cup of tea, I just put the tea bag in my mouth and then swallow a bunch of boiling water like a maniac. <laughs> oh, there's something else. You, 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 you got it. But, I do all those things. <laughs> but no, like yeah, Ava. Like, me at work, I, I sympathize so hard with that. Because, like, my instinct is to do 
everything myself because if I know, I know that if I leave things for the tech to do without telling them to do it, it is not going to ever happen and it's going to be me who suffers, not them. So I just do it just like Ava. My supervisor was like tell, telling me to stop spending so much time doing these things and just leave them for the texts. And it's like, you don't, shouldn't have to tell them to do it. They'll just do it. And I was like, I know they will just not happen otherwise. And I will be the one to suffer. So I'm just going to do it. And so when Ava was like that, I was like, mm, girl, I feel you. It also uh, does happen in our suite where I've tried to see how many days before I can leave the dishes to pile before you clean them. And I'm always the one to break I'm first sorry. when I cannot not use always. the sink. Not sorry? Always. I said not always. But yeah, I did feel guilty when I listened to this episode. <laughs> That's why um, when, I, when I go home, I try to do like everything I can without being asked. Now that I live by myself and I know it's like, I'm like, I don't just want to stick this all on other people all the time. Pull my weight and stuff. So. I'm going to try and be better at that this year. I, it's on this recording so you can play it back for me. Yeah. If I don't, uh -huh. and then I will. Because I'll feel bad. So you can just use this as leverage against me in the future. Uh, I will. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, this frustrates me so much. Why does everyone get the lesson of the Good Samaritan wrong all the time? Like, not backwards, but I almost never hear people address the actual point, which is not help people in general. It's help your enemy, love the people that the world tells you you should hate and despise. It was a parable about who is my neighbor? The point being that it wasn't just the Hebrews, it was all Gentiles as well. I'm still salty about season one of Daredevil. I got the story so backwards, so incredibly backwards, that in the last episode, Wilson Fisk is like, the Samaritan helped the man because he loved his town and he loved the people so much in it. And it was like, th that's the opposite of the whole entire point. How could you possibly get it more wrong? And, and then Wilson like killed every single person in Hell's Kitchen. I, he's like, and he's like, I'm such a good Samaritan. I know. He's like, you know, I helped him because he loved his city. I was like, he was a Samaritan. The man was is Israelite. It's like, that's. Uh, I didn't like Wilson Fisk, so I kind of just ignored everything. I'm he so said. annoyed by it. He also says <laughs> Levite instead of Levite, which annoyed me. But whatever. Um. I bet he also says Jeff too, so you have no reason to like him. <laughs> oh. uh, so David, what a horrible man. <laughs> on the camera, David says, uh, when he's like recording the details for his experiment, he's like, today is Saturday the 14th. I was like, hmm, the Saturday before this episode came out on the AIOC, on, it came out on July 19th, the Saturday before that was the 14th. So... Is that supposed to be the date that this takes place, or would it be more likely to fall with the radio airing? What is time even anymore in Odyssey when they have two different air dates for each episode? But I did think that was interesting, especially because I, I don't know if they would have even known when it would have was supposed to come out back when they recorded it, so I don't know if that was a sheer coincidence or not. That'd be pretty coincidental, though. There's like a 1 in 30 chance of that happening. If you don't even know what um, spot the episode's going to be. Around what point were, was I in the episode? I think a little after the first recording. I like messaged Devin. And I was like, this is going to end up being a true story, isn't it? The first I could just like First recording. In the first recording David did. Oh, I see. Um, cause I was thinking like, man, this episode isn't good. It's just not. And then, uh, I thought it kind of does feel like a story I would just hear, like not one good enough to be an episode, but when I would just hear from people hear being told to me, like on a news story, like, oh, this man did this social experiment or that you'd see like Until an article he snapped being written and he murdered on, his entire family. <laughs> on a website or something like that, or something I would hear in like a uh, church service or something like that, just as like a two second lesson. antidote at the beginning of a sermon. Yeah. 
like not something worth focusing that much like thought on or anything like that possibly made up but probably not and then I realized straight after I thought that last thing oh wait this is probably something that one of the writers did with their kids or it's something they saw online but it's probably just something that happened to them with their kids and then I said that to Devin I sent him that message and he sent me back maybe and I was like yeah okay and the rest of the episode I was like meh yeah you got the general sense of it um yeah. With the bonus feature, I was like, the important thing here. Is uh, that- no, I also said, and the bonus feature is going to be explaining how this is something that happened to one of the writers with their kids. And I was right. Yeah. The important thing about the bonus feature is that Marshall now acknowledges that what he did was not a good parenting move. Like, I really don't think a three year old is lucid enough to grasp the concepts of banana equals freedom after that point that deep into it and we'll just think that they're being held hostage so is that i thought he said like um this just happened to her i didn't realize they said like the age was different at first and he was like yeah she's like 23 now or something like that and i was like okay that you are that insistent on her eating and choose her meals like that i okay very controlling parent Uh, yeah um and then um I, I thought it was 16 for a bit. And then. Eat your mushy banana. <laughs> and then I was thinking, like, well, I was told at certain points when I was younger, I had to, like, sit at a table and eat a certain amount of food, or else I couldn't leave the table. But then, like, I did after, like, two minutes because I cracked and got bored. And it was just, like, two bites left. So I just did that and then I left. And then I thought he said six. I didn't realize it was three. That's kind of lunacy. She was probably in, like, a booster seat and couldn't even get out of it. Yeah. Unless she was helped and she was also screaming. Well, she was apparently, right, she was just, like, laughing and, like, sitting in silent protest most of the time until she got upset and then she ate the banana and got out. But it was still a No, she was screaming at one point and, like, crying. Sorry? She was crying at one point. Yeah, she was crying, yeah. but then she ate the banana finally and got out, right? If I recall correctly. Yeah. I was surprised by how Just, actually similar the real story three. was to David's story. I was surprised that they still had the recording. I was like, he was like playing it and he was like, I can hear her in the background. You could hear her crying. And he was like, I, I'm going to leave her there. It's been like three and a half hours. And I was like, go get your kid. Yeah, I know. Um, speaking of leaving your kid alone, why it's like, oh, okay, I guess I'll just be at home without my parents for an hour after school. And I was like, it's an hour, an hour. Like, that's so little time. It's just like... Devin and I would spend like an hour, like our mom would be downstairs, but she'd be working downstairs with like people and stuff and... Working. Yeah, like by the time... You, by the time I was in grade seven, dad was like, no, it was when you were in grade seven was when dad went to school and stuff. So he would have been gone in the afternoons. So we would have just gone home. And you know what we did? We just watched TV for like a couple hours until he got back. And then we turned off the TV and pretended we were doing our homework that entire time, even though we'd done nothing on our homework yet. It's like. An hour is such a... Especially now, I'm like, an hour is not enough time to do anything. It's this not. It's little amount of time. It's, like, it's really not. It's like, like just, I know he's neighbors with the Parkers. You can't even play, like, a game in an hour for most games. Yeah, I was like, you could take, like, a bath or eat a meal or literally watch, like, one episode of most shows. Boom. Hour. Done. Like... Like, I mean, but if he's not comfortable at home, then I know. But it's just, that's, that's a still, sh- that's a short. But amount also, of time. like I yeah, I'm I'm like it's not that long. But also, if you're not comfortable, then yeah, go hang out with your friends 
You'll I be know. there for like two minutes just, and then you'll leave. They probably won't even notice you're there in an hour. It was so, so weird for me to wrap my mind around it because I was like literally on the weekend, if I'm doing something, I'll be like, oh, what time is it? Is it three o'clock? Oh, it's eight o'clock now. Like an hour is so short. <laughs> That's such a tiny unit of time. Especially when you're actually doing something. Yeah. And sometimes even when you're not doing anything. Just take Like, there are so many times where I'm like, oh, I'm not doing anything. And then it's like, well, after I wake up and then I look at the clock and it's like, oh, it's 1.30 now in the morning again. I have to go to bed now. I didn't do anything today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So Wyatt was the name. You were close. Yeah, you just need to right. rotate it 180 degrees. Yeah. Don't you flash your gang signs on my podcast. They're double U's. <laughs> my gang sign is a double U. <laughs> Aren't that cool? For Wonder Woman or Westworld, they're basically the same logo. <laughs> they also have the same theme song. I'm kidding. Wonder Woman has the same theme song as Spy Kids. Bah, bah, bah. Uh, honestly, I like the Wonder Woman theme, but every single time I hear it in the movie, I'm like, stop. Because it's like all this like music set in the time period the movie's set in and like heavy and dramatic, but it's like it Phantom. still fits the time period. And then it's just like, now we're going to play electric guitars. And I'm like, stop. Did I, did I tell you about the Phantom thing that Nathan... Yes, yes, you did. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. why I brought it up. Yeah. That's, yeah I wouldn't yeah, have thought yeah, yeah. about it otherwise. I told Dad about that when we were on our drive yesterday. I'm so glad to have that knowledge now. It makes so much Me sense. too. I'm like, wow. So Andrew Lloyd Webber really can't do anything. <laughs> I'm like, that's really sad. I'm glad we settled that. I'm like, because uh, I've always considered a phantom like a big fluke, and I'm like, oh, it's because it was Michael Crawford. That makes sense now. <laughs> Michael Crawford is the one who should have the credit for Phantom actually being not garbage. Ah. Uh, oh, Michael love Crawford. Love never dies. I love that squeaky boy. Love never dies. Cats. Like, I don't know. Um, three quarters of Joseph and the Technicolor dream coat. It's it's, it's Literally still everything else. It's still to this day one of my favorite jokes in Odyssey. To the, in the labyrinth, that that joke age is like a fine wine. <laughs> yeah, the more and more he makes, the better that joke gets. So uh, while I was listening to this episode, it actually injured me. I dropped a bread cutting knife on my hand. No, oh, no. I, I was going to say, was it a... between my fingers. I was going to ask you if it was a sandwich-related thing, like uh, injury. And the it first is. thing that came to mind was it's a wrap when Connie's constantly cutting all her thumbs off. No, it's because I was grabbing a French bread and then the knife was on the counter and... I don't, maybe it's because I was wearing, no, I took this off. My, like, arm, I guess. Your sandwich or, no, cloak. No, the, the French bread, because it was, like, a really, really long one and thin one, and it, like, hit the knife, and then the knife flew off the counter, because I guess it was slippery or whatever, and, um, no, it was, like, super dry, and that made it slippery, and then it just, like, I pulled my hand back like I was Neo from the Matrix and jumped back. And it only got me a little bit. But it still hurt. <laughs> Just and like the I Matrix. put Polly's board on it. <laughs> Just like the Matrix. And then I put it in the dishwasher. And then Just I like bent the, the knife with my mind. And then I had to grab a different knife. It's a good thing the other one was clean. Just like the Matrix. <laughs> what are your final thoughts on the sandwich initiative, Victoria? Oh, there were like... There were a couple good jokes in it. Mostly I think it was kind of a throwaway episode. I... I finished it, and I was like, man, I wish that was a club episode. But it did have a positive impact on you, so that's cool. Like, in I mean, terms of the lesson, actually, actually stuck with you. 
I mean, it would have done that if it was in the club, too. And yeah, David's voice really threw me throughout the entire episode. Oh, I hated David's voice. Was it actually Jason? No, no, no. That would be very yeah, weird. He sounded like Jason. <sighs> I didn't think so. Like, oh man, it, it was like, um, my brain is just not working today. What is his name? I know his Townsend name. Townsend Coleman. Thank you, Townsend Coleman. It was like a cartoon all store all stars that like all, all stores. stores. We got that's Zellers. That's the food fight. That's just food Arby's. fight, Devin. <laughs> um, it was like called cart. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm quitting the podcast. Oh, I'm stuck. Bye. Victoria's resigning in disgrace. I can't hear you. I what? said you're resigning in disgrace. I am. Sing the song from uh, Lion King 2 while I exit, please. Dishonor, disgrace, evil as plain as the scar on her thumb. No, it's between my fingers. Well, yeah, cool. but it's on like the webbing of your thumb. So, um, all this episode. Did I look like a Jedi? Yeah. Nice. I'm Mark Hamill, y'all. Oh, my favorite line from. from <laughs> my Galaxy favorite Day. line from Mary Poppins. Yeah. Um. I love David in this episode. I thought he was dumb. I mean, crazy. yeah, I didn't. I wasn't a fan of the new voice, but I did enjoy his like panicky, manic, spiraling descent. <sighs> I thought he was kind episode. of annoying. The kids were like, yeah, and. I like the kids more in this episode, actually. I didn't really have a problem with the kids. Um, honestly, with the sandwich thing, if I noticed the sandwich, I would have, like, cleaned it up right away. I feel like I would have noticed it pretty quickly. We, yeah, um, I mean, even if the kids were like, oh, it wasn't that we have bad initiative, it's that we thought it was your thing, so we didn't want to touch it. There's still clearly a bad lack of communication here where the kids never asked, hey, Dad, why do you have a week old sandwich rotting in the backyard that you keep filming? Maybe that's Hey, an Dad, I know you're upset and jealous that Olivia was in a viral video, but there's better ways to try and make yourself viral than try and give yourself food poisoning. Also, <laughs> it's like it's like the scene from Parks and Rec when the government shuts down events like, do you think a depressed person could make this? And then it's like the two second stop animation that he made. <laughs> That's what this uh, is. That's who David is in this. Um, Have you seen but, that scene before or just seen like the photo set? I've just seen the photo set. You should watch the whole scene. It's very but, funny. <laughs> I should. Um, but, 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 but. The part that bothered me with David was when he freaking... Opened the windows and blew the and stinky air he, into like, the room. Got a fan. He's like blowing it into his kids' rooms. I'm like, what is wrong with you? There could be like fungus growing on it at this point. There and, like, absolutely you definitely could, is. You um, could actually like mess with them and make them sick. And sending black mold into the rooms. And, and more that's importantly, kind of twisted. More... And then he's just like, he even acknowledges that this is possible, but he's like, I don't care. I'm so far off the deep end. I'm like, Ava, you're a doctor. Stop him. <laughs> oh, I know. That's why I like it. He just absolutely lost it, like beyond all reason. Like it just got to a ridiculous point. I was like, this he's is like, so I know entertaining. I'm going to murder my kids. And but they didn't notice the sandwich. Once again, I'd like to point out the kids notice like, oh yeah, dad's blowing this rotting sandwich air into our rooms clearly deliberately. They don't say anything. We're still They're not like, going to ask him oh, why. Yeah. We need to talk about this. <laughs> maybe that's oh, what we, God. maybe we could take a break in devotions from talking about initiative for one night this week and talk about why you're trying to poison us. 
So, um, I'm going to give this episode um, 3 out of 5. I'm going to give it a... I want to give it a 2 out of 5, but... There were things I liked. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. That's a big jump, and I'm going to call it 2.5. No. Is it just because I suggested it? You don't want to seem pliable? It sounds like a good idea. I'm just going to go with the three. All right. So, those were two pretty exciting and in-depth, interesting reviews that we just did right there, Victoria. Too bad we couldn't have mixed it up with the next two episodes, which I personally think were much better than these two. Too bad we couldn't have actually had opinions and formed thoughts like normal human beings, but hey. We didn't. <laughs> so go home. It's been, we've already done 151 episodes that were decent or quality than this. We deserve to have no opinions for once. We're allowed. We've earned this. We're allowed to have a lazy flop every once in a while, right? Wits flop. No, it's not even a flop. What's that thing called in Taz Amnesty? A boom boo? Boom boom? I don't know. Is that what you're talking about? Aubrey's name yeah. for the abominations? No, the thing that Ned does when he jumps into the water. Oh, the foon, because it's short for typhoon. Oh, that's what it is. I thought it was like a swear or something <laughs> like that. No, because he like makes a typhoon from the splash. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, anyway, <laughs> let's leave forever. Okay, Bye-bye. so what are we talking about I'm next time? I've already shamed then? myself out of quitting this podcast like three times in this episode. I just want to go. All right, next time we are talking about the toy and the good in people. Two much more interesting episodes to discuss, I think, which are the next two episodes out of the six in album 65, Expect the Unexpected. So until next time, thank you for joining us on our side of the YouTube. I've been Devin Francis, also known as Leonard Maltzner. And I talk slower than he does. And you've been watching episode 152 of the Adventures in Odyssey Oddcast. Goodbye.